So this is a screen casting version of the loudness and technical compliance solutions for Final Cut presentation that was given at Mac Video Expo 2010 in London. The problem of loudness is, is familiar to many of us who've watched television and we've been watching some program content and then along have come the adverts and suddenly we get a perceived jump in loudness. It's often quite disconcerting and it can result in a number of complaints coming into to broadcasters and regulatory authorities. This is in spite of the fact that most broadcasters already have technical compliance requirements which specify peak program levels for uh, delivered content. So clearly something is going a little bit wrong. This waveform is showing some audio content that registers minus 3 dBFS on a ppm meter. Uh, now minus 3 is a very high level for a broadcast but it just means that the graphics uh, are clear and easy to see what's going on. Here I have the same uh, audio content. Again, it's registering minus 3 dBFS, but this time I've applied some 2 to 1 compression on it. Um, and you can clearly see from the waveform that it wouldn't be surprising if this was louder than the other one. And if we actually analyze both of those for perceptual loudness, you can see that there's a very significant difference in the loudness of the two waveforms. So although they're registering the same on a PPM meter, peak program meter, the second example is actually coming out at 4.5 dB louder. That's about 75% louder, but still reading the same on a ppm meter. And what this is telling us is that fundamentally, ppm measurements do not accurately represent perceptual loudness, which is where the real problem is. In the UK, we have the Broadcasting Code of Advertising Practice Rule 6.9 that states that the maximum subjective loudness of advertisements must be consistent and in line with the maximum loudness of programs and junction material. Now clearly the example that we've just seen with a 75% jump in loudness is uh, going to fall foul of that BCAT rule, despite meeting existing requirements for broadcasters in terms of PPM level. Now this code of practice is actually enforceable and has teeth, and over the last year or so, there have been a number of enforcements by the ASA against broadcasters, which is both embarrassing for those broadcasters and potentially financially damaging. And if you're sensible, the last thing you want to be is the person responsible for having delivered that content to the broadcaster in the first place. Now, the good news is that Radio Canada, working with the ITUR, did a lot of work and testing of potential algorithms for calculating a more accurate measure of perceptual loudness. And they've come up with a single algorithm uh, which is now encapsulated in ITUR BS1770, which not only works for multi-channel surround audio, but also for stereo. And the nice thing about it is it's a non-proprietary algorithm, which means it's equally open to everybody and is therefore being adopted quite widely. A number of manufacturers are providing meters already that will allow you to measure loudness based on this algorithm. And as part of ITUR BS1770, uh, they proposed a unit of measurement, the LKFS, which is loudness K-weighted relative to full scale. Now moving on from 1770, which fundamentally defines the algorithms for calculating loudness uh, and also for calculating uh, true peak estimations, uh, ITUR BS 1771, which is really the document that talks about the application of those algorithms to doing measurement, um, renames LKFS to LUFS, so that's loudness units full scale. And it also talks about loudness units as a relative measurement. So you can have a, a reference level which would be 0 LU, it might be minus 18 LUFS but in, in loudness units you can set 0 and then you can have a loudness range which might be plus or minus 6 LU. 1771 also talks about integrating mode measurements which basically says that you take the loudness, you integrate it over the whole range of the content uh, and then you average that and that gives you a, a magic number that indicates the loudness of that content. And they also have a fast mode measurement where you do the same thing but you do it over a very short travelling window typically uh, 400 milliseconds, in some instances three to four seconds. You take that as a traveling average and that gives you a sort of nominal instantaneous peak loudness that you can use again for doing uh, loudness comparisons. Okay, so now that we have uh, an algorithm for calculating loudness, we'd be glad to know we can get on with enforcing it. And in the US they have the same problem as us. And so the ATSC proposed recommendation A85 based on ITUR BS1771 integrating mode using a minus 24 LKFS reference level. Uh, the idea here being that if you're doing a commercial, for example, in the US, you would integrate the whole of that content and target for minus 24 LKFS. If you're producing long form content, then you have the concept of an anchor element 
uh, whereby you might target uh, characteristic audio within that content, such as dialogue level, and target that for your minus 24 LKFS. Now, in spite of the ATSC 85 recommendation, in the US, politicians have got involved as well because it's, they consider it such a serious issue with the CALM Act, the Commercial Advertisement Loudness Mitigation Act, which seeks to provide the FCC with powers to enforce these requirements on loudness. Uh, and that's so far gone through the House of Representatives and the Senate. And although it's going back to the House of Representatives for some minor changes, that will pretty much become law anytime soon. In the UK, because of the BCAP Rule 6.9, which relates to the maximum subjective loudness, the dominant requirement is short-term peak loudness. This is similar to ITUR BS 1771 fast mode, typically done over a three to four second window. Typically, the maximum loudness requirement here is that it's got to come within zero LU of your reference and minus three LU of your reference. So you've got a fairly narrow window that you've got to target with your loudness value. And the reference is generally taken to be minus 18 dBFS, which is for a stereo uh, 1K tone is the equivalent of minus 18 LUFS. In addition to the loudness requirements, uh, there are often also peak program requirements. And in the UK, that's generally taken to be PPM6 on a BBC Type 2 PPM meter. Uh, in the ATSC version, it's done as minus 2 dBFS. Okay, so in addition to having a perceptual loudness requirement, which is there to ensure that viewers get a, a comfortable and consistent level of loudness, most audio requirement specifications for broadcasters include a peak program level requirement to ensure that there is sufficient headroom for any downstream processing. Now, the most recent set of uh, loudness requirements to come out is EBU R128. This takes uh, BS1770 and extends that measurement with a minus 8 LU relative gate. So what it basically says is if you have a loud section of content which suddenly goes quiet, you ignore the quiet part until such time as the average uh, loudness content has come back within 8 LU of your uh, instantaneous loudness. It uses a minus 23 LUFS reference level and is likely to become a dominant requirement in Europe. So if you're working in an international market and you're needing to hit these loudness requirements, you need to have a, a solution that will allow you to meet ATSC 85, which is ITUR BS 1770 integrating mode, and short-term peak for the UK, ITUR BS 1770 fast mode, and if you're delivering into Europe as well, potentially EBU R128 with its minus 8 LU relative gate. That's three different significant audio standards that you need to be able to support to make sure that you can produce material that's uh, suitable for any uh, end user. At iHype, we've been looking at this. We've produced a plugin for Final Cut, which uses our Karma Audio uh, loudness correction technology, which we'll see in the demo in part two, allows you to take your Final Cut timeline, very quickly apply a two-pass audio filter, which will target any of those standards, so ATSC 85, EBU R128, and short-term loudness. Does a loudness correction so that you'll hit your loudness marker perfectly, and then also does a secondary true peak correction. So if you've seen our, our podcast on uh, peak sample versus true peak, that Karma Audio will actually go in and will make sure that none of your uh, PPM levels go over those requirements. It's very quick. It can process uh, a 30 second commercial in something like five to 10 seconds. And because you're working directly within the final cut timeline, you can go straight to file based delivery, knowing that you're hitting those broadcast audio requirements. So let's go to the demo.